Hi there, Danny here in the outdoor studio, wonderful weather. Today I'm going to talk with you about e-bikes, comparing a cheap e-bike to an expensive e-bike and also some kind of e-bike which is just in the middle price-wise. Uh, you don't know Overfly, uh, Overfly brand probably because these are the bikes I'm doing the project uh, projects with on my Polish channel. What I'm doing in Poland, I'm doing like um, reconnaissance of different um, bicycle lanes in different big cities showing us that we are really evolving it is getting better we can use e-bikes instead of cars at least for commuting but not only so this is the overfly uh, bike but this is the bike which you would pay about one thousand dollars for this is the bike which would cost five times almost five times this price so about five thousand dollars i also made um, a review of the like mid range uh, level which is about twenty five hundred dollars uh, e-bike what's the difference is this a crappy bike and not worthy to to even consider not really but i'm going to show you one main uh, like same feature of these two bikes and four differences let's do it the main feature that both bikes have is that these are the e-bikes so a hybrid bikes what it means they do have the electrical motor in this case in the overfly we have the motor in the rear hub in the merida 120 we have the centrally located motor so they do have the motors they do have the batteries they, they can be located on the main tube like fully integrated inside the main tube can do it they, they do it also like that the manufacturers and also it can be located on the back of the bike but these have the motors these have the batteries and these will assist pedaling you cannot use it as a scooter it will assist your pedaling up to 25 kilometers per hour that's it so this is the the common features uh, common feature for e-bikes both bikes do have it now what are the differences the first main difference is that these are two completely different bikes so the price has to be completely different this is the city bike this is the trail enduro bike because we have 27.5 plus wheels really rough wheels with rough uh, tires very strong frame full suspension bike front and rear completely different bikes bike for the 2500 bike e-bike i've been testing we had the cross level 1.0 boost which was a hard tape mountain bike with the front suspension and also different components so if we didn't have motors and batteries on these bikes merida 120 would still be much more expensive than overfly uh, pioneer so do not be surprised that the price will be different the second difference which is very crucial very important for all those e-bike users is the range you can you can do uh, without charging the battery or without recharging the battery on this overfly pioneer in the catalog they say about 50 to 70 kilometers merida 120 up to about 120 kilometers and this is true because on the overfly i did it was i think 48 kilometers on one of the cities i was doing this reconnaissance on on the bike uh, bike trails bike uh, lanes uh, and 48 kilometers it was no problem it was flat roads it was uh, sometimes economic sometimes the boost um, mode of the of the motor so 50 to 70 kilometers on this bike is true but this one up to 120 i didn't do 120 like from a to z uh, but i did 100 kilometers without recharging the battery and you can do that on flat roads without the boost assistance on the echo mode you can do a lot of kilometers so i would say the more, more expensive motors will be more efficient but also you're gonna uh, get some better batteries with more capacity more energy more juice uh, stored in those the third difference uh, i didn't know it uh, before is something that my wife is able to do on this kind of the bike because we already got one and i think today the other one will will stay here for my uh, mother-in-law uh, regards 
um, my wife is using the e-bike as a commuter and what she can do is that she can cheat on this type of, uh, of the electrical system because you've got only the sensors that will sense that you actually spin it's something like a cadence sensor if you spin the cranks the motor is on and it's, it always works like on and off nothing in between it can be on and off on the echo on and off on the mid on and off on the max uh, power all always on and off so you don't have to push the pedals if you don't don't want to you can just cheat simply spin the cranks the motor will be on on the this is at least the shimano step system very advanced you not only have to push the pedals because uh, the motor will not turn will not switch on if you don't push but only spin uh, but also the the harder you go so the harder you push the more uh, assistance you get from the system this is amazing because especially if you are riding in the in a difficult terrain uh, i was riding between different stages on the enduro um, enduro race last uh, weekend if you go for a steep hill if you push just too hard like on a regular bike it will also boost you too much and you're not going to be able to to stay on the on the track if you push just a little bit the motor will will do it uh, just as you want to so this is much more advanced system in terms of the motor and sensors and everything so i think for me that's the, that's the biggest difference between one thousand dollars hybrid bike and two two hundred and five the uh, two two thousand and five hundred on the shimano steps hardtail i had uh, or this one full suspension shimano steps five thousand dollars bike and finally the fourth difference is the components I have nothing but to say about components on my Merida E120. I didn't say anything bad about cross level 1.0 boost because it had just like decent components. The only thing I, 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 I commented on negatively was, uh, was the routing of one electrical uh, cable which was loose on that bike. Otherwise, good bikes, great bikes. And yeah, the, the brakes were uh, loud kind of loud on that bike but otherwise great bike on this bike though there are some features which you should check out before buying the bike one of these is your racks and fender sometimes they are loud they are heavy these are alloy sorry alloy or plastic okay some parts are alloy some parts are plastic decent uh, quality okay the protection of your chain sometimes is is not really well made and it can get loud on the bumpy road so that's something you should check out on some of the bikes we have there is such a problem on this one no but the worst thing is the rear derailleur shimano why do you even still produce these shimano tourne rear derailleurs um, the the springs on those derailleurs so, so, are so soft so that if you go over just like a small bumps you can, you can get your chain dropped and this is a really bad thing because imagine my wife going to work and getting chain drop and getting the chain back with her hands not really good picture so turning I would just replace it my wife has nexus she loves it uh, my mother-in-law now will get one with the tourney so we'll see how it works for her uh, she already did some test riding but uh, the rear driller is i would say it's a crap but the bike overall it will do its job as a commuter as a bike for some nice uh, trips this is like city trekking bike it will be a wonderful bike it will do the job and re remember you spent one thousand dollars instead of twenty five hundred or five thousand dollars so this bike will do the job the motor the battery is good quality is not as high quality as those much more expensive bike but still it's enough it's it's it, you shouldn't be having um like bigger issues with the bikes uh, but the reader uh, yes i would just replace it i would i would just go for ebay amazon and buy used shimano alivio redrailer derailleur that's it you pay maybe 20 bucks plus the shipping 
and that's it you have a great bike otherwise you can just find the, the right position on the bike if the saddle fits you this is very comfy saddle uh, it's okay if not you just replace the saddle and you have the bike the hybrid bike for years you can do thousands of kilometers on it so that's what i think thanks for watching and see you in the next episode bye bye Hi guys, thanks for hanging out with me. Remember to join our forum.sigbiker.com where we discuss all the topics, uh, training, service, any issues with the bikes. If you want to share anything with us, join our Facebook group. All the links are below. And if you want to join my patrons, feel free to do so. And now, okay, you might watch just one or two episodes more, but then let's go and ride. Achoo!